Hey everyone, today we're here with our reading for September 27th. It'll be Isaiah 31, 32, and 33, followed by 2 Thessalonians chapter, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, Psalm 81, and Proverbs 24, 15, and 16. 2 Thessalonians, it's a little bit of a tongue twister. 2 Thessalonians. Uh, sorry, now back to Isaiah 31 through 33. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. And yet he is wise and brings disaster. He does not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the helpers of those who work iniquity. The Egyptians are man and not God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, the helper will stumble, and he who is helped will fall, and they will all per perish together. For thus the Lord said to me, As a lion or a young lion growls over his prey, and when a band of shepherds is called out against him, he is not terrified by their shouting or daunted at their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. Like birds hovering, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He will protect and deliver it. He will spare and rescue it. Turn to him from whom people have deep, deeply revolted, O children of Israel. For in that day everyone shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your hands have sinfully made for you. And the Assyrians shall fall by a sword, not of man, and a sword, not of man, shall devour him. And he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be put to forced labor. His rock shall pass away in terror, and his officers desert the standard in panic, declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will give attention. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the, st of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. The fool will no more be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable, for the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity, to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning the Lord, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. But he who is noble plans thing. But he who is noble plans things, and on noble things he stands. Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice. You complacent daughters, give ear to my speech. In little more than a year you will shudder, you complacent women. For the grape harvest fails, the fruit harvest will not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease. Shudder, you complacent ones. Strip and make yourselves bare, and tie sackcloth around your waist. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine, for the soil of my people, growing up in thorns and briars. Yes, for all the joyous houses in the exultant city. For the palace is forsaken. The populous city deserted. The hill and the watchtower will become dens forever. A joy of wild donkeys, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is deemed a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places, and it will hail when the forest falls down, and the city will be utterly laid low. Happy are you who sow beside all waters, who let the feet of the oxen and the donkey range free. Ah, you destroyer, who, who, you, who yourself have not been destroyed, you traitor whom none has betrayed. When you have ceased to destroy, you will be destroyed. And when you have finished betraying, they will betray you. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Be our arm every morning, our salvation in a time of trouble. And the tumultuous noise peoples, at the tumultuous noise, peoples flee 
when you lift yourself up, nations are scattered and your spoil is gathered as the caterpillar gathers. As locusts heap, it is leapt upon. As locusts leap, it is leapt upon. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness, and he will be the stability of your times, abundance and salvation, wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Behold, their heroes cry in the streets, the envoys of peace weep bitterly, the highways lie waste, the travelers ceases, covenants are broken, cities are despised, there is no regard for man. The land mourns and languishes, Lebanon is confounded and withers away. Sharon is like a desert, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff, you give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will consume you. And the peoples will be as if burned to lime, like thorns cut down that are burned in the fire. Hear, you who are far off, what I have done, and you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of oppressions, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking on evil. He will dwell on the heights. His place of, the de of defense will be the fortress of rocks. His bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will behold the king in his beauty. They will see a land that stretches afar. Your heart will muse on the terror. Where is he counted? Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed the tribute? Where is he who counted the towers? You will see no more the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech that you cannot comprehend, stammering in a tongue that you cannot understand. Behold Zion, the city of our appointed feasts. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, an untroubled habitation, in an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go, nor majestic ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. That's awesome. Your cords hang loose, they cannot hold the mast firm in its place, or keep the sail spread out. Then prey and spoil in abundance will be divided. Even the lame will take the prey, and no inhabitant will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. All right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and, the, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. When he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God, our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Psalm 81. To the choir master, according to Gittith of Asaph, Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song. Sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. With the harp, Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon. 
at the full moon, our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel, a rule of the God of Jacob. He made a decree, a decree in Joseph when he went over when he went out over the land in, of Egypt. I hear a language I had not known. I, re, I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe towards me, and their fate would last forever. But he would feed you with the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy, I would satisfy you. Proverbs 24, 15 and 16 says, Lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home, for the righteous falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumbles in times of calamity. All right, tomorrow our reading is September 28th. We'll read Isaiah 34, 35, and 36, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12, Psalm 82, and Proverbs 24, 17 and 18. Thanks for reading with me today. I'll see you back here tomorrow.